Welcome to Hotline TV. I'm Amy Walter. And I'm Tim Saad. It's Tuesday, Amy. And you know what that means? It's another primary day. Oh my day. gosh, I am I so excited. <laughs> you seem it. You know, I mean, there's nothing like a primary to really get... The juice is going? Totally. I, I All know right. what you mean. But we know the place that we're really paying attention, and that's mm -hmm. in Colorado. We have three primaries we're watching. Three primaries where the winner is most likely going to be coming to Congress. Right? Oh, there's, there's no doubt. Right. Um, remember last time, uh, Doug Lamborn, he won his primary in Colorado, 6th District. Uh, he, or 5th District, he won his primary. Uh, Democrats thought they'd have a chance. You know, he won 60 percent, you right. know, after Democrats poured in a significant resources. So the winners of these races are all pretty much shoe wins for. All right. So first we start with Mark Udall's district. This That's is a right. Democratic district, three Dems, lots of money, mm -hmm. right? Historic amounts of money being spent. Tons of money. Um, this cycle, Jared Polis, who's uh, an entrepreneur, um, Democrat, he's put in $5 million, the most of anyone so far this year. Considering that Jim Oberweiss has already run, that tells right. you something. Five million, uh, five million bucks. bucks. Um, uh, Joan Fitzgerald, former state Senate president, she is also running. She was the early Democratic favorite. She's still the favorite of the establishment. Um, and then you have an environmentalist, Jer uh, 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 Will Shafroth, who's running. He's tried to take the uh, the Mark Udall uh, mantle of this of this race. Um, he's, you know, they thought he would be able to sneak up yeah, in between the infighting. Yeah, because those two fighting. were fighting They're each other. Fighting, right? but they haven't really started attacking him, which would signify that, hey, he's starting to move up in the polls. So, you know, he still has a chance. You shouldn't count him out. But right now, I think most people are thinking Polis or Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald with her, uh, you know, uh, establishment support. Like labor, labor, list, yeah, and, step, and, right? and just support from all the local polls and everything. They think she has the, the, the help in the turnout operation. Um, but, you know, three-way primary, 50,000 people voting, it, this could go anyway. Okay. Now... Doug Lamborn, is he going to make it? Uh, you know, we've been surprised already. Yes. Tim, you didn't uh, tell us we were going to lose an incumbent in Tennessee. David Davis, he didn't fired. know either. You're fired. He didn't know either. Oh, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, all right. Um, so what do we think? Is he going to make it? He'll make it only because there's a three-way primary. Um, he'll win, you know, with most people think he'll win with a plurality, not a majority. Um, he still hasn't mended a lot of fences in, right. in, 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 in Republican circles, especially the business community, but we think, he'll, think okay. he'll make it. All right. Now we also have primaries in Connecticut and Nevada, although we know who's going to win those things, right? Yes. All right, so Jim Himes against Chris Shays, mm -hmm. Dina Titus against John Porter. Who is the more likely to win of those two Democrats? I think, think? I, think, I think both of them sort of are on the same sort of plane. I right. think for different reasons. I think Republicans, uh, Democrats in Nevada are very excited. Dina Titus, she's, she's gone out of the gate. She's a late entry. She's gone out of the gate, raised a lot of money. Uh, polls, independent polls, showed her ahead. Have shown her ahead of uh, John Porter. Republicans are getting nervous. John Porter's not out there uh, campaigning as he normally does. They're worried, you know, when's he going to start gearing things up? There's a little worryment on the Republican side. I think at the end, Porter's always going to Porter's always going to run a good race, um, but you but know, the numbers are against him registration-wise and turnout-wise. It's, it's going to be it's, tough. It's an ugly situation yeah. for him. He's going to run a good race. Is that enough this time? Right. It has been in the past. He's faced some sort of bad Democrats in the past. Things aren't shaping up like they usually do for right. John Porter. Right. Uh, and in uh, Chris Shays in Connecticut, um, he's going to be also facing a, a candidate he hasn't had to face uh, previously. Um, Jim Hines, uh, Wall Street, uh, former Wall Street banker, he, he knows, investment banker, he knows he's raising the money, he's doing everything he has to do, he's hitting all the right themes, and in the district that's, as you know, going to be helped by a Barack right. Obama sort of upsurge that, that could hurt him. Yeah, I mean, it's really all about if, if Bridgeport turns out and yep. Himes is able to just hit Kerry's percentage in Bridgeport, it's, it's over. It's over. So it's, right. not, it's not that complicated. But Crochet's, he's a tough you campaigner. You don't count out Crochet's. The last of the Mohicans up there That's in, right. in the, the, the lone survivor in the Northeast. Exactly. All right. Well, that's it for today, I guess. Yeah. I it, know we could go on and be, on. We could we go could on. We could go, and you guys would. You really I would, know you would love it. You would love it. But, uh, Tim, we'll see you next time, and right. we'll see you guys next time on Hotline TV.